This is the UK's first lab-grown fat laboratory. The scientists here are growing fat to use in alternative meat. The idea is to make things like soy burgers and seitan sausages much more appealing to people who currently eat a lot of meat. What they're growing here in Hoxton isn't like pork fat, it is pork fat. In the same way a lab-grown steak is made by growing the cells that make up a steak, the team here do the same thing with a pig. So it all starts from the live pig, from which we take a small sample. Once we've taken that sample, we don't have to go back to the pig again. Then we grow the cells, so it's about understanding what they like to grow, so what temperature, what food they want, they need oxygen, and making their environment for it. Once we're happy with the number of cells we have, we turn them into fat cells, and then they start picking up fat and becoming juicier and rounder. And when we're happy with the product, we harvest it and we have real animal fat. So here are cells at the beginning of the process. Uh, so you can see that each elongated shape is a stem cell and then they're going to grow and cover the surface of the plate and then they're slowly going to turn fatter and fatter and this is what they look like once uh, they're fat cells. So you can see lipid droplets. By 2040, some experts are predicting that lab-grown meat will make up 35% of global meat consumption. The next 40% would be conventional meat and the remaining 25 vegan meat alternatives. The team here in Hoxton are hoping that the fat they're growing in this laboratory will make meat alternatives much tastier. Fat makes meat juicy, rich and tender, but if you're eating an alternative meat burger, where do you get that juicy fat from? Chef Josh is making a plant-based pork belly with real pork fat. In usual plant-based formulations and products, you have a lot of palm oil and you have a lot of coconut oil and it just doesn't have that flavour, you know. The thing I'm after as a chef is flavour, like number one, and, and it's the thing that's missing from all of these products. But there are big hurdles to overcome before we're all crunching on crackling grown in Petri dishes. Growing food in this way is a lot more expensive than conventional farming. When the first cultivated burger was presented in 2013, it cost more than £200,000. Now the price has dropped to around £7 for a burger, but that's still a lot more expensive than something you'd buy in the supermarket. Initially, the cost of things like cultivated meat and products containing cultivated fat might be higher than um, a, a burger or a sausage that, that you buy in the supermarket. But over time, that will change. And um, what, what we make is, is made in a really efficient way. Um, it has plenty of other benefits, but in terms of cost specifically, will manage to reduce the cost um, down to below the cost of eating traditional meat. But that's not the only problem. One of the main reasons people might switch from conventional meat to a meat alternative is because of the impact of intensive farming on the environment. But a recent study by scientists in California questions the green credentials of cultivated meat products. In fact, they say in some cases, cultivated meat could be 25% worse in terms of greenhouse gas emissions compared to a conventionally farmed cow. What we need to understand here is that it's not necessarily better for the environment, that it's not a given that cultivated meat is better for the environment. It has to be designed into the production. The scientists here say their product reduces emissions by 80 to 90%. And while the lab-grown meat industry is still new, you could soon be tucking into a Sunday roast marbled with lab fat. Mickey Carroll, Sky News.